Okay, so I'm gonna take my dark color. And buff this all over. Another good thing about this paint being thin is that even though I'm doing it all over, I'm not completely losing my dapples. I'd be losing them a little bit more than I like to. So you can see I just sort of thinned that out a little bit. My dapples at this layer were a little bit um, less contrast from the body color. It was probably because I had them, the, the light mixture a little too thin that when I buffed it down, it disappeared into it a little bit more. It's okay, just keep thinning this out a little bit more. too. I don't know if you can see that you can still see the dapples. They're a bit covered, but that's okay. I can still spot them well enough. So I really am using pretty small amounts of paint, just buffing it on. You don't want to go too crazy because you can sometimes sort of wear away the previous layer, which I did just a little bit right there. That's okay. It's not too difficult to fix later. Okay, now I'm gonna start laying in my dapple details. It's important to know um, the hair growth pattern at this point. And um, you can use really close detailed pictures of horses that have a lot of texture, like grays or um, roans, etc. You can also find there's a um, often used chart that you can a little drawing that you can find online that I reference at first at this point. Um, I pretty I have the basics down that I don't refer to the chart too much, um, but yeah, make sure that you know that and have that in front of you if you need to. Then I also use um, I think I'm going to start with a little bit smaller. one of these, and I actually, for the herring, I like to have one that is nice and frayed. I don't know if you can see that at all, as opposed to a new one that has a nice point. Ooh, it's not focusing. This one's got a nice point. This one's nice and frayed at the end. So using very, very small amounts of paint, I'm just tapping this in the paint and then I even further tap it out here sort of buff it off Let's see if I can zoom in okay then I hold the brush make sure I'm holding it at the angle of the hair growth because these little bristles are going to be making, um, creating a hair pattern. So 
So I just start tapping in the center of the dapple. And start softly diffusing it out. So I'm diffusing this out along the star pattern lines that I had created. Making sure I'm still always holding the brush at the correct angle, never going around the dapple. And I'm not going to get a really distinct hair pattern at this point. I'm just starting to establish that a little bit more. Not sure how well you can actually see what I'm doing. So you can see a lot of the dapples, they sort of, they have a really bright center and soften as they go out. So creating this um, more muted toned dapple at this stage will create a base for when I go to use the lighter color on lighter layers and then I can brighten up the center and add a little more detail and finesse. This is looking a little bit more awkward because of the angle I'm holding this at. Can't get quite as close with the camera here. Hopefully you can still get the gist of it. So I also probably will not film this for very long so that you can just get the idea and then I can work a little more easily. <laughs> The other thing I like is that if, if you ever get a dapple out of control, a couple things you can do, you can come in with this or a smaller brush if you need with the dark color and just tap around the edges till you soften it and get it um, diffused a little bit. You can also add on later layers, clean it up a little bit. So there's a lot, I, I really like the amount of forgiveness that oils have. I'm gonna jump to this lighter color and start building in this lighter area right through the neck here. So I'm really just tapping and anywhere if it starts getting too, if it stands out too much, looks too harsh, just keep tapping it away. You can also, if you get something really wrong, if the oils are still wet, you can gently wipe it. I like to use those blue towels that I use, do I have to hold up a <laughs> tripod? Those blue towels that I use wipe very gently because you can especially get some of that um, rubbed away texture, like I showed you guys getting here a little bit, if you're actually wiping paint off, but I understand that sometimes that does need to happen. And if you're early enough on, it's okay and you can recover from it. I feel like I'm constantly saying, don't worry about it, you can fix it in the next layer. <laughs> There's a lot of truth to it, actually. So I think that's some of the, yeah, some of the freedom of oils. Of course, the goal is to always get it done in as few layers as possible, so you're not constantly correcting what you're doing, but I think sometimes when creating things, or maybe a lot of times when creating things, the biggest thing that stands between us is just being afraid of doing it wrong or messing something up. But yeah, you can go both lighter and darker at any point with oils. Of course, if it's an extreme transition, that might take longer, but it's still, still possible.
So at this stage, I'm using the guide that I placed before, for, but I'm always, um, I mean, I'm also still watching my reference and looking out for any time that I'm getting a little too uniform in size. I want to get a nice variety of like large, crisp, star-shaped dapples and then smaller, barely there dapples. So just looking for the natural variety that's there. And after this layer, I might buff it. I've always in the past you've seen me giving everything a good buff with one of these. I don't think I'll actually do it with this layer. My oils are very, very thin for that initial layer. And they're also very thin for what I'm adding with the dapples. So there's probably very little texture and any texture that is there is the actual little stamped dapples that I put down. So even if it is a tiny bit of texture, it's within the texture of the natural hairs that I'm painting down. So that's not gonna bother me at all. And if I take that brush to it to buff it, I'm more likely than not going to buff out the fine detail that I'm starting to put in. But you can always be aware if you if you can see if your initial layer of dark was uh, too dark, or I mean not too dark, if your initial layer of dark was too thick that you do actually have some paint stroke texture, you can buff that out. Another way you could have done that would be to put down that dark, then buff it, then start with this texture. Because this texture, again, any, any actual raised texture that you're getting, if you have enough, if you have, if you have little enough paint on your brush, you're not gonna get much at all, and anything is going to be within um, the realm of the actual texture of the hairs. So that's not a problem. It can also help to have a nice strong directional light. I've got a um, lamp over to the side here so I could hold it up to it and see if I'm catching any texture that I don't want. Okay so I'm actually probably going to sign off here pretty soon. Just because again, this angle that I'm using is not as conducive to my working. And I think you are getting the gist. So I'll finish this out. Again, I always like to work in sections. So I'll do her neck and shoulder on this side and then her neck and shoulder on this side. And I might throw in a little detail, detail on her face tonight, depending. Um, But yeah, any questions before I sign off? I'll share some pictures once I finish this step. Any questions from anybody? Let's see what I might have missed. How do I choose the dapple placement? So that was based off of um, the last step that I did. I just studied my reference and it takes some practice because you, when you use a reference, it's not very realistic to place everything perfectly dapple by dapple. Um, but I sort of can start by kind of pinpointing those key, those dapples that stand out to me in whatever way, maybe there's a bold one or a big one or whatnot, and kind of planting those around and then filling in, trying to match the same level of 
density and the size and the shape and getting that as um, consistent as possible. And again, it's not as much about depot by depot placement. It's more about getting the feel of that dapple pattern. And it definitely takes some practice, some studying of the way the dapples work, but that was what my first or my, my first layer of dapples was, was just getting the placement. So then once I have that down, this layer, now that I'm detailing them out, I've already got my map from the last step. And yet, and it is interesting how much dapple patterns can vary based on color, based on the stage of the color. Even I find variation from breed to breed. So if you are um, ever commissioning me, I like as much as possible to use a reference that is in the same breed as um, the model that I'm doing. Because there are some interesting subtle differences that can happen um, within breeds that you might not find quite the same feel and look in another for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't know if there's an actual science to that, but it's just my observation that um, there are some distinctions. So, yeah. Okay, I don't see any other questions here that I missed. So, um, yeah, thanks for joining. And I'm going to finish up this layer and post some pictures. Thanks.